Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at a ready-to-fly kit, as the thumbnail should have had. It comes in this little box like this. This is the uh, Tiny Hawk 3 Plus HD. Uh, you might also be familiar with uh, the little quad, maybe under the Freestyle name, but uh, it's not the same as it was previously. Uh, there are a few changes, uh, there are a few things that... I would like to see them change, and I ask them to change. They're minor things, but when you're being picky, you know, every little improvement I can suggest to them, hopefully they pass on, and so other customers, especially new people getting into the hobby that can be so frustrating, they have better experiences. Uh, it comes with everything you need, so if you maybe you've been doing your research and you've heard of um, HD whoops or HD uh, quads and having to update firmware, so there's none of that. The firmware that comes on this, you can fly it straight out of the box. You don't have to start plugging it into your computer and downloading and flashing anything. Uh, also, you don't have to have Betaflight, uh, the configuration application on your computer. You don't have to connect it to computer. If you've read about binding issues, no, the radio is already bound up. Everything's already set, and as you can see, everything is already labeled on the radio. So as long as you don't remove the stickers or you forget what the stickers say, uh, you've got everything you need to get started and flying right away. I do suggest, as with everybody getting started in this hobby, it can be a little bit confusing learning to fly and the stick inputs. So if you can uh, get on a computer simulator and kind of get adjusted to how the quad flies in a simulator, that will probably help you quite a bit when you go out and do things uh, for yourself first off. Uh, this is probably the most flexible set of box goggles on the market. I say probably because I don't claim to know everything about every box goggle, but uh, this one detaches, so they have a mount in the kit, so you can mount this uh, via the pinhole on the bottom there. You can mount this to the back side of the radio, so if you wanted to fly other things or you just wanted to have this, uh, instead of being in the goggles and having that closed off view and you just wanted to have it open and sitting off your radio, you can freely do that. Or maybe you move on and you maybe put HD zero on some planes and you FPV that or various other sorts of things. You can attach it to your radio. Uh, it does telescope out. As you can see, I have mine extended all the way out. It's got a three position head strap and my head is ginormous. So I have things kind of stretched out there quite a bit. Yeah, USB charges, so you don't have to have a charger. Um, speaking of charging, everything charges via USB. They include a USB charger that you can just plug into any USB port. Doesn't have to be a computer. You can have a charging brick that you use for your cell phone. You can plug it into that and you can charge the batteries. It does come with two batteries. So if you wanna fly more than say six or seven minutes, like I show you in the flight footage, a couple more batteries might be in store. Uh, they also send you uh, props. They send you a couple little uh, tools. Uh, they have the uh, firmware wires that you might need in order to update firmware. Say HD zero comes out with a new feature that you wanna try out on your particular ready to fly kit, uh, you can do that. You're not locked in to staying put where you're at. You can move along if you choose to do that. Uh, I'm gonna skip all my typical techs and specs and all those things. Uh, there are two things I would like to, hopefully, especially if you're new, you stick around and uh, we get the chance to talk about things that, that could catch you out even when a, with a ready to fly kit because really nothing in this hobby is perfect. And so I have to draw those two particular things out so that you're aware of it. Uh, if you were to go after this, or you can look at those things on other ready to fly products or quads in general. I nearly forgot before we go out to fly, I will not be wearing the goggles and I will not have the screen mounted to the back of the radio. I'm going to be using my HD zero goggles, which are very expensive, but unfortunately with my prescription and the length that the goggles telescope out, I'm not able to get a clear view. I've flown this a few times. I've flown this, these goggles a number of times. I can fly with them. It's just not clear to me, so I can't really fly comfortably at my typical performance or flight standard. So I'm going to be wearing my HD Zero goggles, but the flight footage that you're gonna see is from the reception of this quad. There is an SD card slot in the side, and I record the flight that you're going to see on these goggles. They're just sitting on the table in front of me, not on my face. And if you're like me, and these box goggles don't necessarily work for you when you get them, or if you have other box goggles, uh, pick yourself a $12 headset like this. Uh, they come with a lens kit, just like this. Several different magnifying lenses. Several people have uh, turned me on to this, so you can take one of those lenses, maybe it's the one I've got in here, maybe it's a different one, and then you can take it inside the casing and just glue the lens in an appropriate spot. Uh, maybe start with some hot glue to kind of get your spot to see if it works out for you, and then maybe use something uh, a little bit more hardy, 
uh, after the fact, after you kind of find the location where you need to glue uh, some magnifying lenses. That is one way if you have a vision like I do that doesn't quite work in goggles that are even this flexible, a little $12 lens kit might do it for you. Okay, winds are about 12 miles an hour according to the weather app, and I am gonna start out in acro mode. So you see down there at the bottom left it says air mode. When you go into angle mode or horizon mode, it'll say ANG or HOR. But let's get started. So just being quiet here at the beginning so you can get a fix on the noise level. It's always something that uh, I like to make sure I can draw out in the videos because sometimes we have concerns about bothering others. And I understand that. I have neighbors as well. They are all aware of my flying that I do. We should be able to fly acro here for oh, two and a half minutes. And that'll get us about halfway through the battery. I have been flying this. Uh, with this radio, of course, as I said at the desk, I am not using the Emax goggles because of my vision. Oh, almost a crash there. Uh, a little bit about the radio. These gimbals, in my opinion, they're not, you know, obviously they're not great. Whenever it comes to a ready-to-fly system, we've got uh, budget mind uh, as a, a part of the major point is the budget um, the radio I typically fly has gimbals that I think for a pair were 140 bucks uh, so something to consider there <laughs> but uh, I can feel a little bit of a notchiness or a dead spot a little bit around center kind of lost track of what I was doing there minute 42 I was wanting to look at the OSD to see how long I'd been flying You can hear that wind a little bit too. So that's, you know, if you got a strong wind and you're in a big open field, micros are not going to be really friendly to that. You're going to be challenged to uh, hold your lines. It's not that you can't fly them, but it's just going to be more difficult. So if you are uh, newer or maybe a little less comfortable on the sticks, flying when the wind is high, say uh, this particular quad, if the winds are above, say 20, you're definitely going to notice. If you hear that fan noise, that is from my HD Zero goggles. Um, it's kicking up. It is 90 degrees here today. And it looks like I'm at two and a half minutes, so I need to bring it in and then we'll switch it over to angle mode. Let's see if I can switch it to angle mode without bringing it in. All right, see, see how it kind of snaps there. So if I just use the right stick, this is just using the right stick, it's always gonna try to go flat. Uh, that's based upon the calibration that you do. So if you calibrate it at an angle, it's going to fly at an angle. It's also going to limit you as far as how much pitch and roll you can give it in forward flight. So when you try to coordinate your turns, as you can see, it's a little bit awkward for me. I'm used to flying acro. Uh, this is almost full stick. Whoa, see I couldn't give it as much pitch as I needed to to make that turn. So it's going to reduce how much you can get out of uh, uh, control. And that that's not typical or that's not specific to this quad that is a beta flight uh, mode that has been around since boy since I've been using beta flight you can see there it's you have to continue to press the stick in the direction you need it to move whether that's pitch or roll and then if you just yaw around like a lot of times you'll see where people will go to turn so they'll fly forward and then they'll flatten out and then they'll turn uh, you want to coordinate that with some pitch and some rolls so that you have turns that look a little bit more natural rather than flat. But we should get about five minutes of flight. See, boy, I'm struggling there. I'm going too fast and I'm not able to get the angle that I'm expecting. <laughs> I'm not used to this mode. I don't oftentimes fly this. About uh, once or maybe twice a year I'll fly this mode. Uh, in reviews on these ready to fly kits. Oftentimes I just jump right to acro, um, but I think eh, it's good to show it every once in a while. You know, I've been flying since 2015, and you might think it's uh, super easy. 
uh, to fly in all modes. Uh, you know, Acro, you have controls of all the inputs, so you can do a lot more, but you're also responsible for a lot more. Looks for four minutes of 46 seconds there. I just wanted to cruise around a little bit more. Uh, angle mode does limit you. Uh, you cannot do flips and rolls. It's going to limit, again, that, that attack, uh, the angle that you can put the quad at. Horizon mode, which is also on here. Let's see if we can I can get into that horizon. Yeah, there we go. Horizon in the bottom left. That will give us a little bit more angle of attack that we can give it, and it also allow us to do flips and rolls. But it still flattens out. You can see if I go like this and I let go of the stick, it flattens out. So it flies similarly to angle mode, but it gives us more flexible and freedom. Did I hit something there or forget how to fly horizon mode? <laughs> uh, in beta flight, you can also change the strengths of these modes, uh, as well as the angle, um, to where it gives you more and more angle. It's a, I've got a short video on uh, how I kind of train myself to fly inside in acro mode, where I decrease the strength uh, of uh, angle and horizon mode. And I just kept decreasing it over time until I got used to the amount that it was trying to straighten. So the amount that it tries to straighten is, you know, if I pitch it forward, how fast does it try to push back to flat when I let go of the stick? So if you decrease that, it comes back slower and slower and slower. And then next thing you know, you're pretty much just flying in anger, uh, acro mode. Battery's getting fairly low. Uh, modest flight here after that uh, two and a half minute mark, obviously, when I'm from what I typically do, but uh, good long flight time. Uh, over six and a half minutes it looks like we might get. Uh, we typically want our batteries when we disarm the quad to come in uh, at 3.5 volts per cell. Uh, so right now the voltage that you see down there is the total voltage. So two, uh, we would divide that number by two to get our voltage of our batteries. And of course I uh, would be remiss to not mention the fact that uh, PH20 batteries tend to sag quite a bit because of that connector, so you can fly it actually lower than that, and when you disarm, it will come back uh, quite a great deal, actually, but uh, you'll see that here in a minute. My batteries are getting low, and oh, it looks like we lost the voltage. Uh, now it's back. Let's bring it into land. Disarm. All right, so, boy, flight time 706. Let's go back to the home screen. Um, and, well, and our voltage was 706 there for a minute. So yeah, really long flight time in that sort of mixed style. When I fly all acro, I get about 4.45 to five minutes, depending upon what I'm doing. Uh, our battery's in good shape. They should be above uh, 3.5 volts, almost 3.6 volts uh, per cell. So uh, they're not storage voltage, but that's we don't want to get too far below that when we're disarmed in order to uh, keep the health of our batteries as good as we can. I need to close this out so that my VTX doesn't overheat. The first thing I want to draw out that I think isn't perfect is one is about the radio and it's not specific to necessarily this kit it's this radio which Emacs does use on a couple of different kits is the location or the proximity of our throt our sticks not necessarily just our throttle but both of our sticks and these switches up here if you are a pincher or a hybrid pincher and you're using your thumb and an index finger or really two fingers and you go to full throttle and those switches are in particular positions there is potential that you could change the mode or disarm the quad and i've done both so something to be careful with is your hand position and going to full forward stick position. Otherwise, I think the radio is just fine. Another thing I have to call out, and I did report this to Emacs, is if you find that you have this quad or any other quad, that when you get to zero throttle, you do a punch out over something, and then you're at zero throttle, and your quad kind of bobbles in the air. It doesn't hold its position with the nose down like you see in this uh, DVR footage that you can go into the beta flight configuration application, uh, you can connect the quad, and then you can go to the PID tuning tab and increase and enable thrust linearization. As you can see in this screenshot, in my particular case with this particular quad, I set it to 85%, and that seemed to take care of the wobble. It went from pretty dramatic to being so minor I wasn't even noticing it. One thing I didn't mention about this having this removable screen is it's held in by magnets. And you could also put this on a tripod. You don't have to mount it to the radio. It comes with a little screw mount that you could use uh, maybe on a tripod mount as well. It's uh, pretty flexible overall. Uh, if you have any reception issues, you may find that uh, changing your 
antennas out may help a little bit, but for the most part, it's about your flying space and your channel. Fly R1, race band one for the strongest power, and fly race band eight uh, as a second attempt if you're in a high Wi-Fi area, because that gets us, race band eight gets us up above Wi-Fi, so that may clean up your video feed as well. So this quad uses PH20 connectors with two batteries in order to give you the 2S power and performance. I'm not a fan of this. I wish they would just go to an XT30. That's pretty standard when it comes to micro quads. Tell me how I know. <laughs> That's uh, sarcasm. Uh, basically, in all of our other quads that aren't um, from Emacs, 2S has an XT30. There was a time we did this, I'm, so I'm just not a fan of this. And another reason why I'm not a fan of this, you can see that if you try to plug in, it gets a little bit fussy. Here, I'll just, let me do the near side here a little bit because I want to highlight something. Uh, so obviously the quad does not is not on. It's not powered up. You don't see any lights. You don't hear any tones. I've only got one of the batteries plugged in. In order to get it fully plugged in, I've got to plug in the other one. But this is what I don't like that because this bulk and the lack of extension, which they, they may have these that are a bit longer to where you maybe you can get it all the way over the top and then you can go this way, that would be better. Uh, still not what I would prefer, but that would be better. But because we have this, it pushes our antenna down. And I don't think that helps us when it comes to our reception. Of course, I can't test it on this particular quad because then I'd have to you know, add wires and I don't like to modify quads when I do reviews. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, don't be surprised if you buy this quad or this kit, uh, you're, you might have that same question of how am I supposed to plug these batteries in and keep my antenna up? Because you know, orientation or antenna, antenna can matter, especially when you're running uh, linear dipole antennas or whip antennas or rubber ducky antennas are oftentimes called. Uh, but that is one of the things I don't care for about this particular kit. These batteries are pretty good and cheap, but and they're widely available. You don't have to buy necessarily Emacs batteries, but these connectors are also going to wear down over a certain number of flights. Maybe it's 20, maybe it's 120. But we know that the PH20 connector wears down, and then your flight time and your performance comes down at that point to where, at some point, it just isn't hardly flyable, and you're getting huge voltage sag on your screen. So that's something to watch out for is when that voltage sag from first day you get it to the last day you fly it, there's going to be quite a bit of difference, and it's because of the breakdown on the PH20 connector. They do have a rubberized battery mat right here on the, on the top, so that's good. That keeps us um, our batteries staying put. Uh, we USB-C, which it comes with that in the kit, so that's really not of a concern. It's nice that the USB-C is on the top because if it were on the bottom, there's possibility that if you were to get a rock or something, if the USB-C, you could cause some damage. Uh, just like in the Emacs other quads, they have a little plastic sheeting down here to keep rocks and other debris from, you know, if you were to come in and land from going up there and poking one of our sensitive electronic components and breaking. Uh, Emacs is one of those companies that always uses the motor wire tape. But speaking of motor wires, I think these are far too long. Now, this is probably early run assembly. I've had this a while. It was sent to me from Emacs. Uh, they don't get any input. I give them feedback, but they don't get any input on my videos. But uh, these wires are so long that even with the tape, they can get into the prop line. So if you have this quad or really any quad, something that you need to do is stretch your wires out and see, oh, can that get into the prop line? Because if it can, then your props might chop it off one day. Something to watch out for again. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that they use the motor wire tape as they normally do. Uh, they also uh, secured down our uh, battery leads back here with the zip tie. That's something else I oftentimes talk about is that companies don't do that, but Emacs has this covered here. Uh, also the camera, this is the HD0 Nano camera. This kit might come in an analog version as well, but maybe they already launched that and I'm just forgetting. Uh, but this camera does have two mount points on the, each side. They loosen those up. You can adjust your camera angle. Uh, this is not a GPS drone. This is not a camera drone. These don't go up in the air and hold position and the camera does not point down. These are FPV drones, racing drones, freestyle drones, whatever you want to call them. They're not uh, G DJI Phantoms or Mavics or anything like that. Uh, they're made to fly around and have a good time experiencing that sort of speed racer or uh, flight free like a bird. Uh, the frame seems thicker and stronger than I recall past iterations being. I know it's flexing, but... Yeah, I, I was just, that was something I noticed. Um, something else to call out is the HD0 VTX is on the bottom. Uh, your all-in-one flight controller is on the top. They do have uh, 
vibration dampening in each board so you shouldn't have to be too concerned about vibrations getting from your props in but of course if your props get heavily banged up to where you can't hardly get them flat one of the things i do after flight is i just kind of look at them i line up both the front and back front and back i line them up and then i bend them back bend them back try to get them to where they look the same and i do that on both sides after a crash uh, that's how i get my props into relatively good shape if your props really kind of the pitch has changed or it's bent down or bent up too much probably time to change them out and how you change them uh it's pretty basic pretty simple just pinch them grab them and twist and turn, twist and turn and pull, twist and turn and pull. It comes off just like that. That's a question that comes up from time to time. Uh, some more picky details. So uh, they've recessed the screws down the center, but not out on the motors, which is fine. We want as much carbon out on the arms as we can have uh, in order to ensure our motors stay securely down. But you also notice they used uh, three screws on the motors, which isn't terrible. We've seen that for a lot of years. Uh, they just uh, went that way. I don't have a problem with it. They also have these little points. The theory behind these points is that if you run into something that the carbon fiber hits instead of the motor bending a bell or something like that, of course, your props are always going to probably hit first. Uh, we essentially have no camera protection. So if you go, you're flying forward, I'm simulating here, and you have a tree, yeah, you're probably going to hit the camera. We've got this bottom plate but unless you're down here and it doesn't roll up, which oftentimes when we hit stuff, it does roll up. Uh, you know, we just da expect to damage some cameras. You can buy replacement cameras and just swap them out. They are, I think, about 50 bucks, though. Something to be considered and noteworthy is that HD quads tend to be more expensive and all their components tend to be more expensive as well. Emax has been one of those long companies that have been around the FPV space for quite a while, at least as far back as I can remember. Maybe they started back in 2015 or 2016 when I started, but uh, they continue to iterate their ready-to-fly kits. One of their initiatives, it seems to be, is to continue to put forth ready-to-fly kits so that people that want to get invested in the hobby or want to start with the hobby, which can be very confusing, it can be very frustrating, starts out at least easier than it would otherwise if you bought components one here one there yes you you could probably save some money by going shopping from a bunch of different websites and then you're going to come back to your computer and try to figure it all out and get it all working together that's one of the things they've eliminated here and hd quads in general generally cost anywhere from 125 to 160 dollars more than their analog counterpart there's just no way around it. You've got expensive, more expensive components and newer components that have uh, fresher technology and they just cost a little bit. Speaking of cost, in the moment, I don't know how much this kit is going to cost. I'll put links down in the video description to Emacs's website as well as any other website that I know it's, is selling this kit. If you know of a local shop to you that is selling the Emacs uh, Tiny Hawk 3 Plus, uh, please let me know. I will, I will link any shop that's carrying these products. It doesn't have to be an affiliate shop. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even go looking for affiliates. If I have one, I use it. If I don't, I don't. But I think that, you know, getting new people in the hobby, it can be frustrating. I work with a lot of people they have, and there's a lot of problems. And I had problems too. This isn't something that, you know, I, I just magically got it. I was telling the story just the other day that the first time I had a, it was back when we just did brushed micros. I had the Sky board or Sysky board, however you want to say it. And it was a fresh board that had just come out and run DSMX. And I was trying to get it bound to my radio. And over the course of several days, it I got it bound, but it didn't keep it bound. And then I found out, figured it out, kept going, kept going. It took me a solid, solid 12 working hours. Not just looking around. It took me solid 12 working hours to bind that board. And that's not even getting the motors running or the camera hooked up. That was just getting the all-in-one board mounted up. How many of you remember that board? I'd be very interested to know, especially this late in the video. So if you're interested in a ready-to-fly kit, know that this kit will help you avoid a lot of the frustration that many people and many of us have experienced when we got started in FPV. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I'll help you out as best I can. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.